All capable of big games. The Tigers are deeper, more athletic. But again, it's 20 consecutive victories from Middle Tennessee as LSU in the white wins the opening tip. And Rick Enzel's a Hall of Famer as well, and he is so good in terms of this system. Everyone knows what's coming. It's can you stop it? And right now, can you stop Anissa Morrow off the bounce? So she played a solid game individually. Where they're going airborne and will knock that one down. First ones for Savannah Wheeler today. 2,000 point scorer in her outstanding career. Morrow with a turn, gets it to go, and she's off to a quick start. We talked about Reese and Wheeler in the open, but that's the matchup I'm eager to see on both ends of the floor. Morrow versus Whitson. Whitson obviously will face up a lot more, but can Whitson keep Morrow from scoring in the half court? She said it really touched her, no foul, as she drove the lane. And here comes Wheeler in transition. Off to Scott, and she'll knock down the three. To Mia Scott, it makes 37%. And that's the key for Middle Tennessee. Transition defense, and if they can get stops, they're going to get out and try to score quickly in transition. Johnson, good pass underneath. And the finish by Angel Reese. And she'll be going to the line. Established the paint points here. And this is Angel Reese jumping into Scott to draw. Rebound comes out high. Bajay Johnson on the spin. Going to keep on driving and laid it up and in. She just kept on moving. And four. Flaje Johnson is the best player in LSU's lineup in transition. She's coming off 14 points and four assists. Down low, Williams with the follow away, and that will rattle home. Not in a modest outfit today, like yesterday. <laughs> oh, the inbounds and a quick strike there by Flaje Johnson. Wheeler taking it out around midcourt with a shot clock to seven. Wheeler on the drive and kick. Gregory got it from the corner. And in last year, Paula picks up the foul. Well, Wheeler with the shot clock getting skinny. Finds Gregory spotting up. You talked to a coach in the last 24 hours who said her development's been amazing. Last year, Paula gets it. She will hit the triple. Just trying to keep the ball handlers on one side of the floor. They don't want the ball reversal. Morrow outside the three-point line. Yes. Oh, she's getting it going. An 18 to 10 lead. Wheeler trying to get beyond Van Lith off the window. Nice drive. Great drive going so fast, but she has just such great touch. You win games, you back <laughs> off that whole idea. It's an addictive but feeling. He's been winning a lot. Double down screen here, looking to get Gregory a shot. She'll fire it and banked it in. Haley Van Lith, one of those who really struggled in game one, well off the mark on. That pass, I guess, and it's going to be up and in. Angel Reese right there. They are bidding for a 30th win. Van Lift will be well short. Rebound taken away, though, by Morrow. So tough underneath that will lay it in. Wheeler off to Gregory. Coming up 24 points in round one. Pass is going to be tipped here to Scott. She'll hit it. That's a triple. It's Scott again. Not this time. Dave Kowalski is 6'5", so that's one of the reasons Angel's struggling around the rim right now to complete her finishes. Well, a great job by Tamia Scott. Those were shots that she was hitting on Friday. Morrow in transition. Spin and a dump down, and the finish by Angel Reese, and one. You see Morrow trying to create off the bounce, realizes she's double teamed, and Angel Reese is running down the floor, feeds her partner, and then draws through the contact the two points. Foul on Jalen Gregory. 5.20 to go here before the break in Baton Rouge. Bolareva steps back for a three and got it. She can hit that shot. She makes 44%. Morrow. Wheeler wants to push it. Every opportunity on the attack will lay it in. And Middle Tennessee has jumped in front. She just has not been on her game yet in this tournament. Wheeler to the big. Well, the Ravo with a finish. They believe in themselves, and it doesn't matter the deficit. They're going to stay true to who they are, and they know they can come back or they can extend any lead. Rattling home, Fly J. Johnson. Middle Tennessee leading the number three seed in this region. On the drive, but well, it's a tough angle, and it gets down for Tamia Scott. On the run and laid off the iron by Reese, who's really had a funky first half. 
Absolutely. I was about to applaud them because that's what they need to do is push tempo. Scott will switch that in from three-point land. Belong three. What well, starts again with Savannah Wheeler pushing pace and Scott spots up on the wing. Defense is late to get out. Van Lift with seven seconds before halftime. Williams is going to drive it, stop, pop, and hit the shot and draw the foul. And you see the overload by LSU and Michaela Williams just elevates, hangs just long enough to draw the contact, and you see how important that button. And one adjustment already you're seeing last year, Poa start this quarter for LSU. Off the window by the 6'6 junior from Moscow. The elephant in the room is certainly what is going on off the floor. And the Washington Post story about Kim Mulkey, which is pending right now, that's going to be swished in by Wheeler. And here's Gregory, who can't connect. And Reese is wide open on the other end. A dribble down, and she'll lay it in. Eddie Van Lith came to learn under Kim Mulkey and to hopefully compete for a national championship. So I'm sure she's not happy at all not to be on the floor right now. Williams at the elbow, and that'll go down. Michaela Williams, a freshman. McLeod J. Johnson opening up the second half with a lot of energy. Reese downstairs doubled up. They're going to swing it for Williams. Got it. In it now because the offense is being selfless. Extra pass there. Poet to Williams for the huge three. And did that pay off in the first half? Here's the drive and the scoop and a foul as well as Scott took the hit. Tennessee, they coaching staff said, we love when the crowd gets loud. And Tamia Scott answers with a big two in transition and going to the free throw line. In the third quarter at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. Entry gets into Reese. Great pass for Morrow. How does the offense flow now the rest of this quarter, especially until Rick Enzel can get his starters back in the game? Tigers by one, followed away by Williams and nothing but net. Yeah, that was an overload play to get Angel Reese the lot to the easy two, but the pass wasn't on the money. Johnson got a good look and a triple. Along with 10 rebounds, so another double-double for her. That is 14 straight for Angel Reese. A handoff for Wheeler on the drive, yes. Here in the third. Morrow to attack. The pass batted around. Johnson got it back. Shot clock's at one. She'll get it up there and hit the shot. Boldereva. Oh, what a difficult shot. In protection, in transition. Six of them for Middle Tennessee. Scooping on the other side of the iron, that'll roll in for Angel Reese. Morrow with a touch. And downstairs for Angel Reese for the bucket. LSU has an awful lot of answers. Well, when you rebound the way they do, when you defend the way they do, it gives you such more of a margin of error. Laje Johnson is so capable of one of the best athletes in our game, and she put it all together when the Tigers needed it most. Now this is going to turn out to be a dominating LSU performance. So all in the second half, the man did the Tigers wake up. And a tough shot there by Savannah Wheeler. It's been a pleasure to watch her her entire career, but especially this weekend. And she was the big reason they came from behind to knock off Louisville the other day. Beautiful spin by Morrow, and she'll head to the line, too. 2,000 points in her career and counting. And she, you see the footwork. Undersized post players, what's the label that has followed Anissa Morrow her entire career? Well, she's embraced it, and she knows how to use her size and her footwork. Angel Reese will zip the pass here for Williams off the fake, steps back for a triple. Got it to that triple. Well, LSU once again pushing pace, and Kayla Williams trails the play. When she didn't take the first three, I was hesitant about what she was about to do. But Johnson attacking the paint. Oh, what a tough shot. But that's the kind of day it's been for her. Everything is just going LSU's way. They're forcing shots. Big three there for Middle Tennessee. We'll see if eventually they get South Carolina again. And that's it.
LSU on to the Sweet 16 again. A fantastic second half for the Tigers, the reigning champions. They ran away. And they advanced to the Sweet 16 for the 16th time in program history. They outscored Middle Tennessee 51 to 20 in the second half. They were down seven points. That quickly became a distant memory.